Aloha and welcome to the Carol Cox Show. It's bittersweet news. And thank you for joining me. It's been a while since we've talked uh, for a while, a couple of weeks. I want to share with you, we got a couple things going on here currently. Uh, sewage spills and IT contracts being canceled but and many other things and oil and uh, plumes of oil. Millions of gallons of oil in plumes in Pearl Harbor. But I want to go back and talk about uh, the sewage spill that occurred on August 24th, 2015. Now we call that loosely a spill and um, today's newspaper, the Star Advertiser, had an article and uh, this article was, you know, when someone digs a hole for themselves and you can understand they made a few missteps overzealous in digging a hole and, and they trip and misrepresent something either intentionally or uh, for whatever purposes. But the environmental services within the city and county of Honolulu made a complete fool of themselves and an attempt to pass it on to the people, to the taxpayers, and to the citizens of this state. And how did they do that? Well, let's go back and, and, and look. This spill originally, uh, as Laura, Lori Kahakina, the director appointed by Mayor Col Kurt Caldwell, she said that initially uh, they got a call and they responded to a sewage spill. Nothing wrong with that. But then what really happened is that about, they're saying about 3 o'clock, 3 ish, 3.30 in the morning, that morning, the police received a call that there were manhole covers bubbling up and popping off at uh, Atkin Atkinson and uh, Ala Moana Boulevard near the Ala Moana Shopping Center. And so that we're told that occurred at about 3.30ish in that time until 7 o'clock. No one from the city and county of Honolulu responded to that incident. At around 7.30, someone from the city responded, and later that morning, va vector trucks or vector trucks came, the large sucking vacuum trucks that suck up water or what have you from the sewer. And a couple things that happened there that begs some explanation from the, the mayor and his director, Lori Kakina. You see, when you intentionally lie and misrepresent on something that really, you, you really don't know why anyone would bother to lie because we, we, we know that our systems are antiquated, our sewage system, we know that our piping needs upgrading. We all understand that. And in fact, we as taxpayers have paid substantially for that. So we understand and that we are always poised to hear another spill because of the system needs to be upgraded and modified and modernized. So why would the director invite lies? And that's what they were, and I'll lay them out for you. They were complete lies and misrepresentation intentionally now, not a white lie or accidental lie, but just an all-out lie. We can do without that. We expect to have uh, some things, nature, it rains heavy. We may have an earthquake. We may have a number of things that would trigger a problem with the sewer system, and, and we, we're not in a perfect world. But Laura Kaikina, the acting, uh, serving as a director, just flat out told bald-faced lies. And to start with, she represented that the reason that this sewage spill occurred was little old ladies and people that own homes and private properties were actually popping manhole covers and open them up and allowing water to run off of their property 
into the manhole. So by doing that, that overwhelmed the system. This is not my words. These are Laura, Lori Kahakina's words, the illustrious director of the Environmental Services Division. But she goes on further to say that uh, these little old ladies, or whoever they are, uh, were doing this, and in fact, by doing that, they could be fined $32,000 for each act. Now, looking at today's paper, you see that there was an effort to be evade that whole statement. She didn't mention it. She didn't attribute any of the problems. In fact, she attributed it to mechanical, uh, mathematical errors. Mathematical errors. And I would say that's a coming close to the accurate uh, description or explanation. Mathematical error. It still doesn't add up. Because she went on further to say, well, one pump was not working and one pipe was not working and they, uh, the, the person handling that, uh, their, their contractor was a little slow in doing this. Okay. Well, again, but then they managed to solve the problem and fix the pipe. That's another lie. Because what you have here, you may characterize them as a comedy of errors or mathematical error. What you had was a person that is simply incompetent. And so goes the entire system. It's incompetent. And you know that if you look at your water bill, you will see on the water bill charges for sewer. And we owe that thanks to Mufi Hanneman, former mayor, who, by the way, had a great interest in this incident because, you see, he's now with the Tourism Board or the, the Hotel Association. I don't know the official title that he holds now, but he don't go far away from the system. So it's funny that in 2006, remember, he had some 5 or 50 million gallons of sewage that was pumped directly into the Alawai, but they describe that as being a spill. See, there's a difference between a spill and a, an intentional dumping. A spill is when something goes wrong and you, you didn't anticipate or an accident or the system was overwhelmed. But when you give directions and, and authorize the direct dumping of a pumping of water into the Alawai, that's not a spill, ladies and gentlemen. That's an intentional illegal dumping. So, with Kahakina, she in turn felt there was a need to tell lie after lie after lie. And, and you couldn't see her nose growing, mind you, but we weren't close enough. But I'm sure if we had that press conference a little longer, her nose would have grown about six feet. She would have been tripping over her nose as we were trying to understand what she was saying. We were tripping over trying to figure out truth, fact, and fiction that she had presented. Now, mind you, these aren't just your everyday people. These are engineers, and she apparently is an engineer, the Department of Facilities Maintenance, and all of those people are led by professional engineers or professional people. And we pay them handsomely to do this. So how is it possible that you could have such a dysfunctional behavior on the morning of the 24th? Now, further, I observed Kahakina and Jesse Broder Van Dyke and Mark Owens and a couple other people standing around for approximately an hour. That was a valuable time because we knew and know and witnessed the sewage water running on the streets and running down the storm drains and running into the park and running into the ocean where children and people were fishing and surfing and swimming. We know that. We saw that. But they were standing around trying to 
contrive or manufacture another lie so that it would look good so that the world would not see that Waikiki had sewage on its beach and in its water. Human health was of great risk and of great concern, but not for Kahakina and the Hanamans and other people that were in, in, in the middle of this. So we contact the state, the state in turn, well, we can't answer any questions because we're working with the city. We'll let them, but the state is a regulatory body. And they are the ones who will be investigating as they indicate in this article. But this relationship became a little too close. So we later learned, and we were wondering, they represented, Kaakina represented that they would be testing the waters. And so did the park director of, of parks and a few other city people and the state people. But the truth be told, the first day they didn't conduct any water samples. You wonder why. Wouldn't it be plausible to think that they would definitely sample immediately on the day of the spill, but they chose not to. Why? Because they probably knew that you'd get some high readings and that would go international and that would impact the tourist trade. It would basically say that if you like to spend good money and go to a beautiful place called Paradise, Hawaii and swim in Kaka and subjecting your family to illnesses, diseases, and bacteria and streptophorus and all of that probably wouldn't go over well. But what about the local population? Why did they not sample that day? Why did they not post signs? So they did finally, and at the press conference, finally, about 2.30, the press conference was held. Now, mind you, this thing has been transpiring from 5-ish clock, 3.30 in the morning till, to 2.30. And uh, I, attending the press conference, asked Kahakino and the others during the press conference, do you have the names and have you identified the individuals who pulled the manhole covers and immediately I was told and reminded that Carol Cox you can't ask any questions because you're not media and subsequent to that Carol Cox you can't ask any questions because you're not media but you might be media but you're not mainstream media so we only talk to mainstream media now these are the rules of this this guy that goes around beating people on the head with the, the law about sit, lie, sleep, uh, shopping carts. This guy called uh, Caldwell, Mayor Kirk Caldwell. This is what you get out of his administration. So you get a director of the, the environmental services who sits and plays Russian roulette with the public health and then lies to the public and then give some cockamamie story that little old ladies are out there popping the lids. And if you've ever seen a manhole cover, some of them can be nearly 100 pounds. No, can't say exactly the weight, but they're not uh, 50 cent pieces that you're just lifting up. So to make that representation and then to immediately object to me asking the questions. So the following day, we find them retracting that and saying we don't, Sasabasara says, uh, Sasamore, I'm sorry, says that we don't have any information that would suggest that anyone was lifting the manhole covers. So the question is, where did Kaakino get that information from? Why did she advance that lie? Do we need an agency head standing there feeling its best interest is to lie to the public. Oh, and by the way, one of the funny things about this is that three days transpired and the mayor was nowhere to be found. Nowhere. And, but again now, y you would think uh, that the mayor would be there to assure because 
it's our flagship. Waikiki is our flagship. So you know that he should have been out there at least reconfirming to the people that accidents happen, things go wrong, beyond our control, the weather is an act of God. We understand that. Bear with me. We'll do something. I can assure you we're not sitting on our thumbs, so says the mayor, if that was it should have taken place. But he was nowhere to be found. Was somewhere in hiding. But now, mind you, when the bicycles, the bicycle path, he has an entourage. He's smiling. He's on a little pink bicycle or whatever that means, whatever color it is with his helmet and smiling. Whenever the rail issues, he's right there. He wants that 2.5% GT taxes and all of that. He's for it. But when Kaka is flowing down the streets, fecal matter, flowing down the street, into the streams, into the parks, where the parks have to be closed, he's nowhere to be found. So, again, the responsibility, though Kahakina stood there and lied, the responsibility still lies with Caldwell. Ownership. You take the good with the bad. And so the question then becomes, why would they lie in such a fashion and they have to close the parks but yet did no samples and then the next day? And then following that, now you look at a number of the pictures I have over my shoulder here. And uh, these are pictures that were actually taken on that day. What you see is the actual conditions that were there that day. Now, back to this uh, matter where I am not recognized by them now as a uh, media. Well, first of all, I'm a citizen. And I have a right to, if, forget the media part of it, I'm a citizen and I have a right to know how my government is functioning. I have a right to know that I can ask questions and I can ask for documentation and they are manda mandated to give it to me unless it frustrates some function. But that has to be justified uh, and, and an exemption that is justified. But you just can't willy nilly tell me, go away. You don't look like the rest of us. You're not in a a plain white wrapper or vanilla skin or blonde hair or whatever the reason is, uh, you can't make your laws up in a democracy if you're the government. You just can't do that. But this is consistent with how he beat down the homeless, you see. So I, I'm not shocked that he would have appointed people, Jesse Van Dyke Broder and the other uh, folks who would stand there. Kahakina should have told him you don't have a right to deny him to ask questions. If the rest of the people are asking questions, so can he. But it's not a big problem. We'll get to that. Roy Amamiya, I telephone him. He's a managing director. Three days later, he finally gets to me. I explain to him how I was treated in that press conference, how I was, they refused to answer and they were disrespectful and he assured me that he would take care of the matter and get back to me. To date, I have not heard a single peep, peep from Roy Amamiya. We'll be visiting him later, and we may be looking at civil actions to file a complaint in court. Because you better come up with a good idea, an explanation as to why I, as a citizen, under the Uniform Information Practices Act, I can ask questions. I can seek documentation. And mind you now, this article in the Star Advertiser, the uh, Kahakina says that, quote, this does not happen very often, she said. We want the public to know that we weren't trying to hide anything. No, you weren't trying at all. You, that is probably the most accurate thing that she, was, she can be quoted on that she was not trying to hide anything, not trying. And let's underscore the word trying, because she was actually hiding things from the public. See, that's honesty. A person is telling you a white lie, but it's a bald-faced lie. And, and now, mind you, it may sound harsh, 
but when you look at what is at stake here, the health and welfare of the environment and the people, hepatitis and many other diseases are found and are associated with sewage water, untreated sewage water or wastewater and many other bacteria and illnesses that are sort of strep, many things. So we can't possibly be expected to accept this kind of behavior. This was a spill and, and a few thoughts about why the mayor was evasive. You see, on one hand, we have a system that is dysfunctional, a sewage line, a sewer system. And its carrying capacity is pretty much exceeded already. And we're paying for it. We've seen our problems. We've experienced our problems with these uh, sewage matters. But you see, when you are a mayor of a city that is handing out permissions to building permits to build high rises that's going to house hundreds of people, all going to tax the existing dysfunctional sewage plants and the dys dysfunctional sewer lines. So you wouldn't want to marry your face with that issue, with that sewer problem. The guy is very slick, but not slick enough that he, usually people that's going to play games with you and with the public and the taxpayer, usually he surrounds himself with people that are eloquent, people that are strategic in their actions. They don't stand there and lie and then giggle. And so, again now, we haven't spoken about the volume of sewer, so let's go back to that. The first morning, the first public statement, it was something to the effect by Kaikina, we have a hundred thousand gallon and we expect it to increase. Of course, because it was still going till 2.30, so we, it doesn't take a mathematician or genius to know that, but probably in her league, probably, you know. So Kaikina tells us at that time and then magically she came back and she also said that sticks and twigs and stones and things that may have jammed it up the pipes and that may have contributed and then finally they came and said well we had only one pump in and we didn't foresee this we should have known better because we were professionals and we should have known better the reality is she knew better in the beginning but what she didn't do it was to do her job. She failed the people. She is not a professional. She is nowhere near being a professional in this situation. And I believe that she should be fired. And if the mayor does not fire her, I think you as a taxpayer should take that all into consideration. Remember August 24th, 2010, 2015 and remind ourselves that the little old ladies that were popping off these sewer caps or these manhole covers to drain flood waters from their property, which then would flood down the Ala Moana, uh, let's remind them that those little old ladies, quote little old ladies, do vote. And you shouldn't lie on little old ladies. I could see if you say some bodybuilders, but you know, little old ladies and older people who have properties that were impacted by the flood. So you would think that she would be saying, you know, we've learned that this was impacted by this heavy torrential downpour that we've experienced here. We apologize and we'll be working to moving as fast as we can to prevent and avert any further damages. But you go down to Waikiki and you find People there swimming, and they shut down the beaches. But the debate was, we can tell the people not to go in the water, but we don't have a law to tell them they can't. Does that make sense? So some of the signs, the, in, to protect the Waikiki image, they decided not to put signs up saying that it was contaminated with sewer water. But what they did was put signs up that say, beach closed but no explanation. <clears throat>
beach clothes. And then people were swimming and no body boards or no boards. These are the signs that were there. The state health department is complicit in this big lie as well. Now they say in this article they will continue to investigate. Why waste the time? If you were there monitoring it and coaching the city along the way, giving them information and refraining from speaking when the public asks you questions, then you are as complicit as they are, State Health Department, because if they were in fact in violation, you should not have been their partners in crime, you should have been the regulator in crime. And to this date, unfortunately, I trust nothing that the State Health Department speaks when it comes to the sewer and sewage spills in the state of Hawaii because there's something missing. They're more interested in the image and the bang of the buck, the monies that are coming in from tourism, and they subject you and me and other taxpayers and other people that travel here to bacterials and diseases and hepatitis and all of those things because they want to make money. We can't expect to have a perfect world, but we can have people that respect us so Kahakina said that, jumping back to the volume of water, she said that it was, later in the day, some 500,000 gallons. Then she changed it and said she overestimated. They didn't communicate. And today, they are now admitting that it was 587,150. And I submit that I believe that is even a lie. And I believe that the reason she's coming forward because we have placed a UIPA request for public records and they know to eventually the real truth will come out. And we received information from workers that were on site that had already reported that it was more than she was telling us. So we'll keep watching. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Carol Cox for the Carol Cox Show and Bittersweet News, aloha.